Ever wondered why your drawings don't look the way they should? After all, in your mind, the concept is simple. You kinda know where you are in the scene, you know your point of view, you want a powerful badass shot of your character from below where he stands, brave and bold with a big smile on the face, but something is off. That smile seems to be sad instead of joyful, or one eye slightly above the other, or even the neck looks non-existent, or all the surroundings look weirdly squashed or stretched. Well, you might think it's because you suck at anatomy, and that might be true, but <laughs> most of the times it's just because you didn't grasp perspective. This video, I made it to make you nail the most basic and valuable concept about perspective. In fact, you don't even need to go deep into advanced knowledge to then produce believable drawings. These, along with the two other topics you need to master to really get good at drawing, which are gesture and anatomy. Well, yeah, I said believable drawings. That's the point. We just need enough information to make whatever we draw believable and uh, you'll see how if you stick to this video until the end. You see, perspective uh, is the only thing that allows your object or character to exist and make sense in the space through the lenses of your eyes. Gesture is to make it move and alive. Anatomy is to give it an identity. Is that human, an animal, an object? But perspective is the first fundamental that you need to understand to make your drawings come to existence on the surface. The paper and it's actually quite simple because we can identify three types of perspective which allow us to draw anything correctly they are one point perspective two point perspective three point perspective you master these three and you'll be ahead of 99 percent of beginners but what are these points what do i mean by one two three points well, these are the so-called vanishing points, which are imaginary points on the horizon line where the lines that define an object converge. But all this will make sense later in the video. Before that, we need to clarify some necessary basic ideas and vocabulary with which you should become familiar. And those are parallel lines. Two or more lines that are at an equal distance from each other and therefore, no matter how long they are, they will never come in contact or cross each other. Then we have perpendiculars, lines that cross or touch and make a 90 degrees angle to each other. Diagonal, a straight line that connects two non-consecutive vertices of a polygon or just a line with an inclination. Then we have eye level. The eye level is located exactly at the height of sight. Therefore, it follows wherever the viewer goes. The observer. The observer is the character, you basically, through whose eyes the scene is viewed. The cone of vision. The cone of vision is the area that mm, the viewer's eyes naturally see, including peripheral vision, and it has approximately an aperture of 60 degrees. Then we have the picture plane. The picture plane is it's an imaginary plane perpendicular to the observer line of sight that stands somewhere between the observer and the object being observed. You know, vision is the perception of light reflected off objects that comes toward the eye. So the picture plane is like a sheet of glass where all this visual perception gets stopped and trapped on this flat reality that eventually will become your final drawing. Then we have the vanishing point. As I said earlier, these are imaginary points where the parallel lines that define an object converge away from us, right on the horizon line, which, as we know, coincides with, with the eye level. So remember this key information. Whatever is below the eye level in reality will appear below the horizon in the drawing. Conversely, whatever is above the eye level in reality will be above the horizon line in the drawing. So now that we've established uh, these ideas, we can go ahead and talk about the one point perspective. And to do that, I introduce you to the famous cube. The cube is one of the most simple and fundamental shapes, and we will use it as an example to explain all the concepts that we need and also as an instrument of torture and suffering in our practice. But I'll show you how at the end of this video. Now, one point perspective happens because one side of the object is absolutely parallel to your picture plane. 
while the others parallel to each other appear to point away from you and end into that one vanishing point. One key concept to understand here is that even though these parallel lines perpendicular to your line of sight are the same length in reality, will appear a different length depending on how distant they are from you. In fact, A is now shorter than B. Let's make a couple examples here. Say the cube is placed as if it were floating in midair exactly in front of you, with your eye level right in the middle of the side facing you. All you would see is a square, right? But if it was made of glass and you could see the depth of it, this is what it looks like. All segments of the sides pointing away from you would converge in one point, the single vanishing point. Let's say we want to see our cube from above. That means that all we see will exist below the horizon line in the drawing. So let's begin to draw the base of the cube. By establishing the length of a side, we can straight away project the points on the horizon and therefore intuitively find the other sides. We now get the height of the cube and complete the geometry. As you can see, the top side of the cube that previously was visible only through the glass is now visible from above. Finally, same process applies when seeing it from below. The cube is now above the horizon line and what you see is the bottom side of the cube. So here is the representation of what you see simultaneously from the front view, from above and from below in a one point perspective. And here are some examples of scenes in films. So what you've seen till now is a simple geometry standing in front of you. But what happens when uh, the object rotates or you move around it? Well, guess what? The point of view changes. Now we have a two-point perspective. While in the one-point perspective all sets of parallel lines go to one single point on the horizon line, with two points now, each set of converging parallel lines go to its own vanishing point. You can notice now that every time your point of view changes, the vanishing points on the horizon line move accordingly. Also, one thing to keep in mind is that the more these vanishing points are close to each other, the more the geometry gets distorted and um, it's your coin of vision getting stretched. And in order to keep things visible inside it, they need to be kind of squashed and distorted. It's just like having different sides of camera lenses. Speaking of distortion, we can now move to the final three point perspective. Yes, we're kind of rushing now, but we already had in a third point, but that's because by now you should have clear in mind all the basic concepts. In fact, to all that we've already discussed, you just need to add one single point either way up above the horizon or way below the horizon. You may wonder now, okay, but well, what's it for? The third point establishes the height of your geometry. And you may say, yes, but even with the one or two point perspective, we could draw the height of things. See, depending on how tall is the object and the point of view you are watching it from, its height gets distorted. Have you ever walked on a street, raised your eyes up and looked at the top of a tall building? This is what you see. That's what the third point is all about. See, something interesting happens here. When the third point is above the horizon line, you are actually observing from below. Conversely, when the point is below the horizon, you are watching the object from above. Well, my friend, now you have acquired all the necessary principles to draw believable shapes perfectly existing in the space of your drawing. But remember I told you that the cube is the most terrifying shapes of all? Yeah, because now you'll have to apply all the knowledge in this video. And to do that, I want you to draw hundreds, thousands of cubes, all from different points of view. It'll become your worst nightmare. That's what I did, that's what every good artist does to master perspective. Do you know Kim jong Gi, one of the most famous and respected artists in the world? He literally said he mastered the cube in order to draw all his figures in any perspective and from any angle, all from memory. Now the natural step after perspective 
is you want to give life to your characters, make them move and act. So you need to understand just your drawing. And I made a video for that. Click here to learn everything about it. Bye.